All right, what's up, y'all? Uber757 here, we're all Uber and Lyft drivers. Good to have it. My son Wesley is with me today, acting silly as usual, like a teenager does. And um, we're in Hampton today. Just, I got him out the house, just walking around, getting some exercise, because he needs it. So, <laughs> so uh, what are some things I like about driving, ride share with Uber and Lyft? Well, one thing I've been telling you guys about um, is the tax benefits. I'm still waiting to do my taxes and waiting on one piece of information that I should have had on Friday, but what, again, was delayed. But um, I have waiting for me right now $10,000 just from mileage alone, just from tracking my mileage with a Mile IQ app I've been telling you guys about over and over again. And only a couple of you guys have even even jumped on, um, but it really um, has been a godsend because um, if I try to just pen and pencil it and track everything, yeah, yeah, and it makes a difference. It makes a world of difference when you have an app tracking your mileage. There's plenty of them out there, but I prefer Mile IQ. It works the best um, for me. So. That's one thing I like about doing this because you're an independent contractor, so you're a small business, so you get to you get to reap the benefits that that employers get to reap uh, because they're businesses and you're a business too, only a, a, a small business, so you get to reap some of the tax benefits that they get to reap. Um, and that's one of the things I, I like about being a rideshare driver here in the 757. So one more thing that I like uh, about rideshare is the flexibility that I have. So since I am basically my only my own boss, basically as far as rideshare is concerned, anyway, I decide when I work. Now, those of you that know me, you know I still have a, a regular job, if you will, but it's part time, and so I so the, uh, the rest of my income comes from me doing my own stuff for my own business um, through Uber and Lyft. It's kind of a smaller version of, you know, when someone owns a McDonald's or a Burger King, for example, they're a franchisee, for example. So yeah, yeah, they're, they're McDonald's or Burger King, but they're their own boss. They, you know, they have their own little, they, they can, you know, choose to some degree what happens at their restaurant because they're like they're, they're they're like their own boss so the same thing applies to um rideshare it's a small business a tiny business but still a business so for example it's saturday and uh it's about right now about 4 30 p.m about or 16 30 roughly we were going to go in there but wouldn't have enough time to really see anything. Maybe we'll come back over and shoot another video tomorrow. But while he's sleep tonight, um, safe at home because I live with family. So while he's sleeping at night, I'll be out again driving probably till about 3 in the morning. from Probably from about 9 p.m., give or take, till about 3 in the morning out doing ride share. And so that flexibility is, is awesome because... You know, a lot of jobs you've got to be there by at a certain time you, you, you start and then you finish or whatever or well, there's jobs that you have where for example or income streams that you have where uh, you know at a certain time no one's doing it whereas doing this there is almost always somebody somewhere who needs to get somewhere and so that flexibility allows me to be able to work my regular job part-time and still do my uber and lyft stuff and be okay i'm not wealthy obviously but but be okay um and be able to do things with my son even if it's something simple like walking around 
and be able to do things with my nieces and nephews and you know things of that nature on more on more of my own schedule and so it's nice not having a boss if you will telling me when I have to it's nice having that freedom and again while I still drive tour buses and I have a boss that kind of tells you with that what to do even with that because of my arrangement with them it's very flexible so that's part of why I enjoy doing ride share uh, one of the good things about doing about doing ride share This is East uh, Queens Way in Wine Street in Hampton. So this is a little little nook here, right by Marker 21, in the tap house here, where you guys, as rideshare drivers, should be able to pick up customers on Friday and Saturday nights. Back in the day, I used to drive the bid bus here in Hampton between downtown Hampton and the Peninsula Town Center. The bid bus for the business improvement district bus. I used to drive it on Friday and Saturday nights, and this is one of the places here, or the places here that you guys should be able to pick up rideshare passengers um, and make a little bit of money if you happen to find yourself down here in downtown Hampton. Just want to give out a little bonus. I'm mean, not really part of the video per se as far as the subject, but since I'm down here, I figured I'd point it out to you guys quick one more thing I like about being a rideshare driver with uber and Lyft is just what I'm doing right now trying to put something into my son's brain here video game filled brain is trying to teach him some things about history and other things and my passengers often teach me things as we look at the Emancipation Oak here at Hampton University in Hampton Virginia as we put so I put something into his video game filled brain I'll take a moment real quick and get the GoPro close to the wording here so you guys can pause the video in a couple of spots and read this stuff But often I learn a lot of things from my rideshare passengers. We have conversations about all kinds of things. And I do mean all kinds of things. And so just like right now, putting something to my son's brain as well as my own brain, my passengers put things into my brains. I learn a lot from them. I learn about other places in the area that are jumping or happening. Sometimes they will tell me that, hey, this time of the year, this event goes on that I never, ever knew about. Or maybe they might share with me, for example, maybe I'm, maybe I'm going through something personal in my life. And in our conversation with a passenger, because sometimes the conversation does get quite personal with some of our, some of our rideshare passengers, right? You can often learn from them and they might share some encouraging words with you about a similar situation and share with you how they dealt with that situation and overcame that situation. You see... In that aspect, in that context, ride share, yes, it's a way to make money. It's a little small business, but it's much, much more than that. It's a way for you to interact with different people, different backgrounds, different races, different creeds, different sexual orientations, even, you know, 
and at least even if on, on that note I'm an old school straight guy but on that note at least on that note be more compassionate perhaps towards those types of folks whom I morally do not agree with but helps me to recognize that they are still human beings and of value something into my son's video game field brain another thing i like about ride share here in hampton roads and ride sharing in general is well i'm a guy and well most real men like females so i meet a lot of beautiful ladies doing ride share and we have some really interesting uh and this is a exhilarating at times conversations and as a male it's nice that a lot of these ladies um will say hey you know are you single whatever you're, you're a handsome fellow things like that as a guy of course as you look at these really cool gun emplacement mounts and stuff like that where the batteries used to be at ready to blow stuff into a million pieces of that's right oblivion but uh it's always nice to get those kinds of compliments from the opposite sex and so doing this get a lot of them. Can you imagine, Wesley, how big the guns were, the, the artillery pieces were that were here, just freaking massive. Can you imagine the thing just goes boom, just, just boom, just uh, they probably crazy. They to get like something to strap themselves down because the impact is so great when it blasted. I like, think you're right. I think you're right. It's like, boom. Otherwise, they're going to fly off the edge and they die. Well, look, the, yeah, look at these things here. Look at this here. Yeah, look at that right there. That looks like it's something that would put either prisoners or anchor on. Yeah. That's my chair right there. But anyway, that's one thing I like about uh, doing ride share is the ladies that you come into contact with. Most of them are cool. Some give you num their numbers. Some of them become your friends or whatever. So it's, it's really cool. And sometimes other stuff happens. I won't, I won't comment too much more about the other stuff that sometimes happens. There's a top here. Don't fall in. <laughs> Be the last time you fall. Probably fall in your head. But anyway, the batteries here. I've probably told you before, but the batteries here at Fortress Monroe or Fort Monroe used to protect Hampton Roads Harbor. So, and back in the uh, Civil War, let me get my bearings right. Back in the Civil War, where is Lincoln's house? Lincoln's house is right there. So back over that way, we can't see it um, if I'm pointing the right way. Am I pointing the right way? I think I, think I am. But back over that way um, is Norfolk. And Norfolk actually, during the Civil War, actually didn't belong to the Union. It actually belonged to the, to the uh, Confederates. Or rebel, or rebel forces, if you will. Um, so, yep. And of course, you can see it right straight through there, right there. Um, that fort right through there, through the trees there. That fort's called Fort called Fort Wool, also known as Fort Calhoun. It also helped protect Hampton Roads Harbor as well. So there are actually two forts here. If I remember correctly, Wesley, that house right there, um, President Abraham Lincoln 
actually stayed in that house right there. So President Lincoln, for a while, lived in that house right there. Like I was saying, when we were up there at that battery up there, this is this house here belonged. Well, it was the house that uh, uh, President Lincoln stayed in. So let's read what the plaque says real quick. It says Fort Monroe quarters number one. In this house, President Abraham Lincoln stayed during his visit of May 11th through the 6th, 1862. It was here that President Lincoln, General Wool, Fort Wool, Fort Wool over there, aka Fort Calhoun. May, may, make a connection to you that uh, General Wool and Commodore Goldsboro planned the attack on Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. Now, why would they want to attack Norfolk? What I was telling you earlier off camera was because back during the Civil War, Norfolk was in the hands of the Confederacy. This is a Union, this is a Union fort here. But back then, Norfolk was in the hands of the Confederacy. So at that time, Norfolk was the enemy but what did they have against the confederacy ah remember the confederacy remember slavery confederate the confederacy wanted slavery they oh, wanted black yeah. folks in chains remember? oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah no no unfortunately our schools don't do a great job of teaching our kids like they used to they that's why my son has asked that question which he should have known but that's okay that's what daddy's here for. Yeah. So during the Civil War, there was a war between the states and one of the, and the North and the South, the Union, the Union, the United States, and then the Confederate States of America, the CSA, or the rebel states, which, by the way, the capital was in Virginia, in Richmond, in the, in the, sta in the uh, state house that still exists today. I've taken you there before, too, but you probably forgot. But uh, they were at war. The, the thing they were mainly at war over was slavery keeping my ancestors and your ancestors enslaved, which is absolutely wrong. And many of them call themselves Christians, mm. which should have known from, uh, you know, from a Pharaoh keeping slaves that that was wrong, dead wrong. But anyway, that's another subject for another day. But um, another reason that the South uh, and the North Fort was also something that I do agree with, which is called states' rights, where they didn't want the federal government to have have just crazy amounts of power over the individual states and so that the people of those states would have more freedom to decide their own destinies and what they want to do for themselves. That part I agree with, but the slavery part, dead wrong, point blank, don't pass go, slavery wrong, always, period. So basically these are like the old barracks that they, where the enlisted people and uh, it was like a central parade feel. And it wasn't too long ago when they shut down Fort Monroe as far as the army officially leaving Fort Monroe. It was only 2011, 2018 right now. So seven years ago, go back seven years ago, basically, this used to be an active United States Army base. Um, so yeah, a lot of what was here, they moved it to Fort Eustis and other commands. next thing I like about being a rideshare driver with Uber and Lyft is the fact that because I do rideshare with Uber and Lyft and because of YouTube and other social media, I have the opportunity to meet a lot of people like you guys who I meet out here doing rideshare. And I make new friends whom live hundreds if not thousands of miles away from me. And that's probably the most rewarding part about being a rideshare driver. The fact that by me making these videos, trying to be informative, helping drivers out, and sometimes just being myself, being goofy, that I make a positive impact in people's lives, hopefully. And hopefully, I can give you guys some really good tips every now and then to help you make more money, to get you closer to where it is you want to be in life, or what it is you're trying to do. From Fortress Monroe in Hampton, Virginia, Uber 757, where all Uber and Lyft drivers go to heaven. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Drive safely and with skill.